BODM has been nominated for an award, yes. which is very exciting, a Juno. A Juno Award is an, is an amazing accomplishment. We're all very excited and happy and can't mm -hmm. thank the people enough for um, supporting our music. This band's pretty quick though, like I mean things have rolled really fast. We released the album in September of 2011. Got Best Rock in November of 2011, and now we got the Juno nomination in February 2012. I was streaming on my iPad, so, you know, the connection was a bit choppy, so I was fortunate enough for it to freeze on the BODM. <laughs> I was like, so I was like, through my iPad, I'm like, yeah, and I started texting the guys, I'm like, oh, we did it, we did it. You know? It was so cool. We're really hoping that this uh, Speakers of Tomorrow is, uh, is, a, is a new beginning birth of, of singing about bettering our people, you know, mm. singing about the good. It's just like celebrating family, celebrating culture, celebrating youth, you know, making them the speakers of tomorrow. Hopefully our second single will be the one, it's called How Long? And there's, that's a, another issue of uh, the missing women, which my brother wrote, beautiful song. I uh, bring medicine and uh, we smudge it before each show. Awesome. You know, so I get to say a prayer uh, in Ojibwe, which I speak. Um, still, still learning my language, but I speak enough of it to like say prayers and speak to other um, Anishinaabe. But uh, it's it's um, it's a tough balance, you know. I think that actually keeps us grounded as uh, Aboriginals, you know. When, we smudge, you know, like we don't care if it's like five minutes before showtime, whether it's BODM or Buffy. We tell the, you know, the manager, like, you know, you gotta hold on until we, we finish doing our ceremony. We did perform last night and JoJo got to see us perform. We also play with Buffy St. Marie. My home reserve, um, York Factory First Nations, actually planning a honoring ceremony for me. That's what I was blown away by. Wow. It's like, wow, you know, cool. Congratulations. And, um, like, my chief is really supportive of me and, you know, wants me to come back and share some of the stuff I've learned on the road and touring with Buffy. I know for a fact that I play with more intensity, um, but what I, what I like, what we're saying about influence from Buffy, mm. it's like I'm kind of like I'm being controlled, you know, in a great way. It's a more like finesse, I'm doing rockabilly, like you were saying. I'm doing folk, I'm playing with brushes, you know, it's like stuff, different stuff. I'm playing with in-ears and track is going on. Me as a guitar player, definitely. Like, I've rockabilly and um, country, you know, I've, I haven't played that stuff for 10 years, 15 years before Buffy came along, you know. Definitely something we're used to, I guess, because we've been playing in bands all our lives. Uh, it's not a, it's not a life for everybody. That's definitely for sure. I mean, a lot of people can't handle. It. I mean, we're on a third base player. <laughs> you know, he's, and he's, he's the, and the longest. <laughs> he's the longest base yeah. player. He's yeah, we went three of them, yeah. or two of them. This is the third one. And uh, I find people since we joined, well, since we played with Buffy, we become more respected as musicians. Uh, people listen to us now. What we have to say, you know, and definitely with this band, it's we have a lot of influence. Um, I'm, I'm a believer in like I just want to I, and I learned that from Buffy because me and her talk a lot because I'm a songwriter so I sit there and talk about it I learn from her songs mm. and then I tell tell her my stories of my songs and she's like she's like you're on like the right page you know of writing songs of like how to inspire kids you know how to make them think of that they're good mm. you know that they're good enough mm. 